Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And, and this, this is The Insider, Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hey there, cat! Hey Another Bruce. weekend. Another weekend in the bank, and yeah. I am back at, like, doing my whole work thing and getting ready for the week ahead and really kind of reeling at how busy of an October it's shaping up to be. Yes. I mean, yeah. my goodness. Like, like you said, the events just don't slow down anymore. No. They don't. That's awesome. But but then you're like, oh, my gosh, there's even more coming up. And, and yeah. I'm just I'm floored and I'm amazed. And it's it's incredible. <laughs> it gives us plenty of material. That's for I sure. Know. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, we don't have anything to stop yapping about. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how did your weekend go this weekend? Oh. Did you do anything? Yeah. Um, actually, I, I was able to get out of town and hang out with a friend. Uh, I went to go see Much Ado About Nothing at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. So that was pretty cool. Oh, right on. Yeah. Very and cool. uh, which was really nice. That was really nostalgic for me because Much Ado About Nothing I actually did when I was in high school and I played Beatrice. So oh, okay. I was the very sharp tongued <laughs> lady at the center of all that. And it was nice to see a different interpretation of it. It was nice to, um, they really leaned into the music on that production too. So oh. it was like half a musical practically. Oh, like, geez, Yeah, okay. with that, it wasn't just Shakespeare and it was, it was really nice. Yeah. There yeah. It was be really a soundtrack good. included on the thing. There yeah, is. That's yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Which is awesome. They don't mm-hmm. always do that. And sometimes it can feel like it's stuffed in there like unnecessarily, but like there's a lot of, actually a lot of music in that play in particular. And they actually leaned into it instead of shying away from it. And it is, fit right in. Yeah. And there, that, yeah. Well, maybe there's a reason Shakespeare put those song lyrics in there, right? Yeah, hello. Yeah, leaning into the music of it all. It really does make for a nice experience. So, yeah. That's true. Great time. Really good time. So nice yeah. to, to be able to catch that and support regional theater. And yeah, it was, it was a good time. Right on, mm-hmm. right on, yeah. yeah. My first weekend off without, uh, without, yeah, right. Right. which is bizarre. Last weekend, last mm-hmm. Saturday was the last one and uh, for the season. And then, like I said, uh, last week's show that we'll be back next year full spirit we'll be getting all together and everything we talked about that whole thing but yeah so it was cool i enjoyed it relaxed i should have you know it's cool because i finally made it all four days i do four days a week at the gym <laughs> in the mornings yeah and you up at junior off of school and go do it it was the first week in a long time that i i was able to actually do it because when i do events or something it's hard to get there on fridays i miss a day or two days or something like that you know through the whole dang summertime but in the winter it was like i was going now i'm back on track again winter mode (laughs) it's winter mode not everybody says that at winter time too so that's kind of funny yeah yeah. (laughs) a lot of people go like into hibernation Uh, oh (laughs) no man in the winter i want to work out even more because it's get ready for the summertime ready for all that torture all that fun (laughs) yeah torture fun yeah with you (laughs) not say torture no it's fun it's a blast (laughs) Uh, i love it no there is a lot behind the scenes you know Chrissy Cooper partner of crime there she uh, did a little interview with the pilot I guess and everything and she was talking about what really you know there's a lot that goes to these events and not everybody can put an event on and when they do like when we were talking earlier before the show man if you don't follow the ABC's if you skip C, D, or E or something like that, oh, you, yeah. I, you'll mess up the whole works. You really mm-hmm. can. Real easy, real easy. So, yeah. yeah. It's a tough job. Somebody's got to do it, and we just happen to be really good at it, and we enjoy doing it and everything like that. And working with you, has, it's been great. We're working with Three Penny is always awesome. So, yeah, yeah, we love it. It's good, y'all <laughs> yeah. professionals and know what you're doing, and it's really, yeah, it, it clicks and it jives. So, yeah, that's great. So, yeah, as we said, we got a bunch going on and everything. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we might as well get going here. Before we go, I'd like to thank the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows, as I always say, all you got to do is go to kciw.org and you will be on your way. Hey, let's get this thing started out with a yeah. music schedule. Lots of that going on. Definitely. So starting things off at the Elk Valley Casino down in Crescent City. On the 12th, Invincible, a Pat Benatar tribute is happening. Doors for that open at 7 p.m. The show starts at 8 on the 19th, Elk Valley's hosting stand-up comedy with Jason Collings. Doors opening at 7.30, show starting at 8. And on the 26th, they're going to have a cosmic bingo night. And for that, doors open early at 6 p.m. The games itself start at 8 o'clock. Yes, indeed. You get all set up for the bingo. Hey, and Cisco, I finally got this schedule right. And on the uh, 12th, the 19th, and the 26th, they'll be at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then on the 30th, He'll be at the Checkco Activity Center 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And then we've got some dates for Bloodline here. They're playing on the 18th at Checkco Brewing Co. at 6 o'clock. 
And then on the 25th, they're going to be at the Inateca in Crescent City playing at 8 p.m. Yeah, and then Mike Powell on the 20th and 27th, it'll be at Augustino's at 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Yes, and Black GTO is playing on the 11th of October. They're going to be at the Inateca in Crescent City playing from 7 to 10 p.m. Yep, and the Checkco Effect will be playing on the 19th at the Misty Mountain Brewing, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then the Mighty Steelheads are going to be playing on the 18th at Porta Pints at 7.30. That's in Crescent City as well. Yeah, the Italian guys are going to be playing on the 12th at Inacheca, 7 p.m. And then we have some dates here for Misty Mountain Brewing. All music there runs from 6 to about 8 p.m. On the 9th, they're going to have Miss Clara. On the 11th, Lon Goddard. On the 12th, Rogue Strings. On the 18th, Reggae with Gabriel Cosas. On the 19th, The Czech Co. Effect. On the 25th, Lon Goddard again. On the 26th, Two Time Nelson. And on the 30th, they're going to host Angelic Noise. And this is going to be celebrating Misty Mountain Brewing's 10th anniversary in business. Wow. Yeah. Woohoo. It's been that long. Wow. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Time flies. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rogue Strings on the 12th, they'll be at Misty Mountain Brewing, 6 to 8. And then on the 26th, they'll be up in Gold Beach at the Sea Star Bar and Grill, 7 30 to 10 30. Then we have a lineup of dates for the Inateca in Crescent City. On the 11th, it's going to be Black GTO playing at 7. On the 12th, the Italian guys at 7. And on the 25th, Bloodline is going to play at 8 p.m. Yeah, that's it for the music. So if you got some music out there, if you're in a band or, uh, yeah, you want to get your dates read on the air, just like everybody else that gives it to us, all you got to do is send it to CaptainCurry541 at gmail.com and I will get it in here. And hey, you might even end up in the Inside of Southern Oregon Entertainment newspaper. So there you go. Mm, All right. Well, let's look at some other events happening in the community, starting off with the Checkco Library in Brookings. They're located at 405 Alder Street. And to start things off with their weekly events going on, every Tuesday at 11 a.m. they have Story Time that features stories, songs, and games for young children and their caregivers. And also on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., they have a free chair yoga class. This is a beginner's yoga class that focuses on seated positions. And they have some activities on Wednesdays as well. On Wednesdays at 1.30, they have after-school activities. This involves homework help, a creation station, and snacks for older kids and tweens. And then on Thursdays at 1.30 p.m., they've got another chair yoga class. Again, a free beginner's yoga class. It focuses on seated positions. Thursdays at 4 p.m., they have more after-school activities involving homework help, some STEM projects and games on Thursdays, as well as snacks for older kids and tweens. And then at 5.30 p.m. on Thursdays, they have their Easy Flow Yoga class. This is a yoga class for beginners that includes standing poses. And for this one, of course, it is highly recommended that participants be able to comfortably get up and down from the floor. And then coming up at the library in monthly and special events, first Saturday, October 12th, 2 p.m., they've got their Fall Poetry Slam. Poetry lovers of all ages are invited to an event that celebrates the written and spoken word. Poets can recite original poetry, or they can share a poem by their favorite poet with the group. Sign-ups for this event begin at the door a half hour before it starts, and anyone who performs will be entered to win a door prize. And then on Monday, the 14th, all day long, they have their monthly Spice World Spice Bags. Take a culinary journey around the world. Their spice bags feature a unique monthly spice from a different part of the world. Each bag comes with a tester sample, trivia, and recipe suggestions. Supplies are limited. It's first come, first serve kind of take-home activity. And then on Wednesday, the 16th at 12 p.m., they're going to have lifestyle medicine. You can join OSU Associate Professor Stephanie Polizzi for a free monthly community discussion on health, nutrition, and wellness topics. And for this month, their discussion topic is, of course, going to be scary foods. And then (laughs) October 22nd at 5.30, they are having one of their Tuesday game nights at Checo Brewing Co. So game nights are an open game night featuring games from the Checo Library's growing board game collection. This is hosted at Checo Brewing Company on Railroad Street. You can try a game from the library or bring one of your favorites to share. This is a free and fun opportunity to meet and connect with other board game enthusiasts in the community with plenty of table space to spread out. And of course, kids are welcome, but they do have to be accompanied and supervised by an adult guardian. And game nights happen every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And then coming up in book clubs at the library. So start things off on the 9th of October at 4 p.m. They have Kids Book Club, and this is geared toward second through fifth graders. And kids vote on and pick the books that they read each month. 
And then on the 17th at 5.30 p.m., they have Pub Grub Book Club. This casual book club is for adult fans of graphic novels. It takes place off-site at Misty Mountain Brewing in downtown Brookings. And if you need more information about any of these programs, services, events, book clubs, you can visit checkcolibrary.org and check out their events calendar. You can give them a follow on Facebook for updates, or you can give them a call at 541-469-7738. That's just the library, folks. Now let's tell you what's going on throughout the town. Take another deep breath. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's and a local next. library stuff. Jeez. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Not many places can say their libraries do that. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, Brookings Emblem Club, number 265, is having a fall rummage sale. This is going to be going on at the Brookings Elks Lodge, October 11th, 12th, and 13th. Uh, the donation drop-off will be accepted on the 11th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Brookings Elks Lodge downstairs venue. The sale begins on the 11th at 10 a.m. They look forward to seeing everyone there. Proceeds from sales help the club help those in need in the community. Well, Very cool. There you go. Good cause. Another rummage sale on the books. That's okay. right. And hey, tis the season. Mm-hmm. David's Haunted Mansion is opening on the 11th of October, running through the 1st of November. They're inviting folks to see them in their new downtown location at 1072 3rd Street in Crescent City for a fun night of screams and scares. Their sensory walk, formerly known as Small Scares, will be open on all operating nights from 6 to 6.45 p.m. And tickets are available for that in line at the door. This is a low sensory experience with no strobes, smoke. It's at a lower volume. And house lights will be on with no actors. This is a fit for looky-loos and scaredy cats, they say. And then the big scares, the full sensory experience runs every night. And tickets are available for that at the door as well. And they have a full schedule here for 2024. So if you want to go to the Haunted Mansion that takes place on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, they have their sensory walk from 6 to 6.45 again. And then their big scares start at 7 and run until 10 p.m. Yeah. All right. And now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. It is. And here we go. We got a few quotes from uh, actress Julie Andrews. She was born October 1st, 1931. Perseverance is failing 19 times and it's succeeding the 20th. The arts bridge cultures. They're good for the economy and they're good for fostering empathy and decency. When one door closes, another window opens. And did you ever notice the color of Mary Poppins' petticoats? They were kind of orange, apricot, and red. I think she had a secret life going on down there. (laughs) Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Julie Andrews, otherwise known as Mary Poppins. With Cousin Bruce, until next week, hey, have a great one. Yeah, There's some great. special significance in that color combination that I'm just not picking up on. I know, <laughs> I was trying to figure that out too, but that's something, you know, that did you ever notice? You know, yeah. it's like, oh, you know, I, you know. I mean, other than being quite bright. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all right, all right. Hey, you know, and, dig and, deeper into that, yeah. <laughs> and the one I, I wanted to mention really quick that we do have the Checkco Playhouse Haunted House will be happening. We'll have all the info on that next week. It's on the cover of the paper, the poster, of course, so. I didn't have a write-up on it, so I got to write everything up, but it'll be on next week. Yeah, I got to write it all up, but it'll all be on next week's uh, show and everything like that. So, you know, tis the season, like you said, haunted houses are in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Info coming soon on that. All right. Well, coming up for another October-themed event here, a Harvest Festival plant sale is happening at the Botanical Gardens in Brookings. This is going to happen on the 12th of October, running from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., It's going to feature live music, apple cider, baked goods, bobbing for apples, face painting, and pumpkin painting. There's going to be a Xerxes Society booth, a Master Gardener's booth. You can tour the garden and also celebrate National Indigenous Day and learn about the local Talawadani Nation. Promising fun for the entire family, and they invite you to get tickets for the Potted Garden Raffle on the 12th of October. A Potted Garden. Hey, Elk Valley Casino, located at 2021 Elk Ranch Road in Crescent City, is presenting Invincible, a Pat Benatar tribute. This will be happening on the 12th at 8 p.m. Tickets are on sale in person at the Points Club booth or online in advance at www.etix.com. And, of course, on the day of the event, doors open at 7 p.m. with the show starting at 8. Seating is first come, first serve. And, of course, you must be 21 
were ordered to attend. Alrighty. And then the grand opening of the Crescent City Pump Track is happening at Beachfront Park in Crescent City. This is happening on the 12th of October at noon. It's going to feature free giveaways for kids as well as riding demonstrations. And they invite kids to bring your bikes and helmets. Yeah, there you go. Fun stuff. Hey, Checo Valley Museum, located at 15461 Museum Road, is presenting Cider on Sunday, 2024. It's going to be happening on the 13th, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Apple pressing will be going on there. Step back in time and witness how cider was made during pioneer times. You can bring up to 10 gallons of apples and one or two clean gallon jugs. Minimum is a $5 donation. And the experience of pressing apples the old-fashioned way will be an unforgettable. I've seen it. It was cool. Apple pie baking contest. Call any old bakers. Show off your skills in their apple pie a baking contest. They have two divisions, youth. It's up to 18 years and adults are 19 years plus. Prizes await the top three picks in each division. They say, please have your delicious pies at the Checo Valley Museum Annex by 215 for judging. Afterwards, they'll be selling slices with ice cream, a treat you won't want to miss. Then they got a bake sale going on as well. Take home some scrunches goodies from the bake sale and try your luck at the raffle tub. You might win some delightful surprises while supporting the local history preservation efforts. And then they got live music also and hot apple fritters. Your participation in this event will not only be a day of fun and delicious treats, but also a valuable way to support the preservation of our local history. For more information or any inquiries, please call them at 541-469-5650, or you can call them at 541-469-3144, and they say, no dogs, please. All right. Dogs and apple cider don't mix together, apparently. It's not, yeah, a little sticky or something like that. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, coming up at St. Timothy's Episcopal Church at 401 First Street in Brookings, they're presenting an evening with acoustic soloist Terry Robb. That's going to happen on the 18th of October at 7 o'clock. And Terry Robb is a fingerstyle guitarist, singer, composer, arranger, and record producer. And for more information about this event, you can visit terryrob.com. Tickets are going to be $20 at the church or at the door on the day of the concert. You can get them at the door as well. Yeah, very cool. Hey, and the Calvary Chapel in Gold Beach at 29935 Harbor Way is having a first responders appreciation dinner. This will be happening on the 19th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. They're inviting the police, the fire, EMS, sheriffs. All are welcome. Any first responders are welcome. Please give them the opportunity to serve you. So there you go. Good stuff. All right. And then Legends Arcade is going to be having a Halloween party this year on the 26th of October from 5 to 11 p.m. They're inviting people to come down to the Legends Arcade for an all-ages Halloween party. And also coming up on the 26th of October, that's a Saturday, there's going to be another Halloween-themed event happening at Checo Brewing Co. at 830 Railroad in Brookings. And they're going to be hosting a screening of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. This event is run by Southern Oregon Coast Pride, and it is going to be a fundraiser for them. And this one-night-only screening, again, of the Rocky Horror Picture Show is going to be happening starting at 9 o'clock, running to about 11 o'clock. And they are inviting you for a wild night at Checo Brewery to support your local pride group. They will have prop bags for sale. Checo Brewery will be pouring drinks, and you can learn a little bit more about their various events and programs and services that they offer for the LGBTQIA plus community. So this event is open to people of all ages, but they do say, of course, it is a rated our film those under 17 years old do have to be accompanied by an adult guardian and tickets are available in advance for this one night only special event at eventbrite.com and tickets are $15 and you can also check and see if you can get in on the night of event but they do note seating is quite limited so they do encourage people to get their tickets early again tickets are available for the Rocky Horror Picture Show at eventbrite.com. Are they encouraging people to get into character as no. well? Yes. Absolutely. I, I was going to say, I couldn't see anybody going without dressing as one of the characters. Yes, yes, they are currently trying to recruit for a shadow cast of characters to lampoon the film in front of the screen. Yeah. It's a classic thing that happened at Rocky Horror oh, Picture that's Show cool. yeah. events. Yeah, that's yes. a part of one of those classic like urban screening mm-hmm. kind of experiences yeah. that you have. That Again, they have prop bags for sale oh, there, yeah. too, so you can get into the participatory fun. That is uh, also, again, a hallmark experience of going to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, if you've never been before, there's 
things that you can do, including when it rains and seen like opening newspapers, things get thrown at the screen, things get shouted at the actors on the screen. <laughs> popcorn it's a, everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Popcorn flying everywhere. It is the pinnacle of the, the, the movie it. experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And for those who, who aren't familiar mm-hmm. with it, it is a wacky, wild B-movie film. And uh, again... Just uh, a fundraiser for Southern Oregon Coast Pride. So if that's of interest to you, eventbrite.com is where you can get the tickets in advance for that. Beautiful deal. And we got yeah. it in there just the right time, too. I oh, didn't yeah, realize yeah. what Sometimes day it was. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, good job. Good job. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> <laughs> got it right in there. All right. Hey, Curry County Chamber of Commerce is presenting the Curry County Candy Map. They did this last year. Join the Small Business Candy Map Fund. The Curry County Chamber of Commerce is thrilled to announce their Halloween Candy Map event in collaboration with local small businesses. Because on Thursday, October 31st, they'll be handing out Halloween candy and celebrating in style. Attention all small businesses in Curry County. This is your chance to be a part of the Halloween magic. Get your business on the Halloween map and join the festivities. They encourage you to, hey, host a sale, organize an open house, be creative and have fun, serve refreshments, help make this Halloween unforgettable for the whole community. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to showcase your business and connect with local customers. To participate, you can please contact them at currycountychamberofcommerce at gmail.com. And they can't wait to see all the spooky and fun ways local businesses will be celebrating. Oh, yeah. Uh The library is going to be a stop on that map as well. And so, like, in addition to your classic trick-or-treating candy, of course, we'll have some fun, like, you know, festive and commemorative bookmarks to hand out because that's what we do. Sweet. (laughs) On a free bookmark. Very cool. Say hi to us. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for a bit of real history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right. Hey, cat. Hey, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of real history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know... That it was believed King Henry I died from eating too many lampreys? It's true. Here's the story. As weird deaths go, this one is right up there. King Henry I, who reigned from 1100 until his untimely demise in 1135, had something of a penchant for eating lampreys. The jawless eel-like fish is as strange-looking as it is ancient, with fossils of the creature dating back to the age of dinosaurs. Although they have been described as tasty, It's not the kind of dish usually eaten in large volumes. Well, Henry I begged to differ. His doctor insisted he take it easy on eating this delicacy, but the king's insatiable appetite for lampreys overruled his better judgment. So much that he eventually died after a night of voracious feasting on the slimy fish. Well, one theory suggested toxin from the lampreys was the reason for Henry's death, since the physician who extracted his brain post-mortem reportedly became ill afterwards and died a painful death a few days later. While the king was known to enjoy lampreys more than your average person, it probably wasn't the cause of his death. Modern physicians who have studied the case have theorized the most likely cause of his death was a central nervous system infection from listeria monocytogenes. Well, if you ask the old bushwhacker, the story did sound a bit fishy. There we go. Dear me. Just reminds me of, you know, how like Game of Thrones, George R.R. R. Martin pulls like a ton of just inspiration from British history yeah. into his, his world building. I think there's a joke in there where like somebody's poisoned or something and one of the characters, they're like, do you know why this happened? And they're like, too much lamprey pie. And lamp so now race. I know exactly where that came from. Yeah. Like, I know where George R.R. R. Martin got the inspiration for that. There oh, we go. yeah. Lampreys are. Too lamprey pie. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember where they're at in Canada or something like that where you go up in this place and you... Yeah, they're known for the lampreys and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. They're looking too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're a trippy looking eel looking fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, more power to the people who love that, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) It's like blood sausage. There we go. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, slightly spooky too. Good good job on the bend there with it being spooky season in Albers. It was a good one. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. All right. Well, let's take a look at some more Halloween events coming up here. Curry County is going to be presenting a Halloween block walk at the courthouse that's up in Gold Beach, and the candy will be handed out by each department located in the courthouse. And this is going to happen on Halloween, the 31st, from 3 to 5 p.m., and they do note that in the event of bad weather, the candy will just be handed out in the annex hallway. So there the will still, but there will there. still be candy. There's going to be candy. Still be candy, right. yes. yes. <laughs> be candy. Mm-hmm. There will be candy. Mm-hmm. Hey, Curry Public Library at 94341 3rd Street in Gold Beach is having a Memory Cafe Curry. Memory Cafe Curry meets every third Wednesday of the month from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. 
To register for the program, you can email memorycafe at cplib.net or call 541-247-7246. A Memory Cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include, but are not often limited to spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners for the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in their same situation. Now, Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by a qualified social service provider, library staff, and volunteers. All righty. And then coming up here, see, we have an ongoing thing going on here with KCIW. KCIW is running a soapbox series, and they're giving folks a chance to speak their mind on this show. Basically, KCIW offers two minutes of airtime to anyone who has something to say. There are a couple of rules, of course. There's no cussing, no slandering, no advertising. But other than that, folks are invited to share what's on their mind. So the studio is open every Wednesday between 2 and 3 p.m. for people to drop in and record. So there you go. Just you got an in. outlet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, and it's game night at the Whimsical Griffin. This is located at 615 Checo Avenue right by the Redwood Theater. Tuesdays and Fridays, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, and hey, a bunch of board games and more. Hey, hey. And That's then ongoing PSA here, Always in Need, Meals on Wheels is looking for volunteer drivers. If you would like to do something that will make you and those you help very happy, if you would like to do something to help give back to the community you love, if you'd like to help out your fellow human beings, then Meals on Wheels is looking for you. By delivering a hot meal to those who are homebound, you not only help someone who is hungry, but you also bring a bit of kindness into their lives and a friendly face for them to see every day, social contact that they may not have otherwise. And there are three routes that deliver hot meals to about 60 seniors on a daily basis. Each route takes about an hour and a half to complete, just 90 minutes of your time. You can volunteer by the day, the week. You can volunteer bi-weekly, bi-monthly. Even if it's just one day a week, one day a month, whatever works for you, every little bit helps. If you're interested in helping in this great cause for the community, they invite you to contact Meals on Wheels coordinator Debbie at 714-423-9797. Yeah, hey, well, that's it. We got the flying fickle finger fit for the producer, and it's time to close out this week's show. Hey, before we go, we'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producers, Ray and Tom, for all their great work making us look and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you all for tuning into this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows they have to offer. You can also catch the fantastic show podcast, including the Insider Report, by going to KCIW.org. And while you're there, you can check out the live streaming as well. Hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. We are signing off. So please support local businesses, keep it real, and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll, we'll see, see you out there. there. Bam. Bam! That is our sign That's off the Halloween for the rest spirit. of October. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in November, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.